Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, make sure you go and follow me on my Instagram, which is Tash Binney, where I share lots more about my day-to-day -day life, mental health, and being a medical student. Yeah, I've just got a few updates basically, now that it's 2022. I have got my brand new daily planner, which is super cute, it's got bumblebees on it. When I saw it, I was like, I was with Zara today, and I was like, that's the one for me. I have also got my glass of non-alcoholic 0% Sauvignon Blanc. I really butchered that. I said that in such an English way. I am so sorry if you speak French or if you are French, because that was just awful and there's no excuse. But anyway, all will be revealed why I am drinking alcohol-free Sauvignon Blanc, so stay tuned. Make sure you stick around to the end where I am going to be sharing a little bit more about my mental health dip, I would say, and a bit more with how I'm doing and what the plan is going forward. So I thought we would start addressing why I'm drinking alcohol-free wine. Now, it's January. I've decided to do dry, dry January. I have fallen into a bit of British culture and I drink not a lot but quite regularly and I just thought it would be a nice chance to try not drinking alcohol and see after probably about five years of I try and stick to you know no more than 14 units a week but five years of regularly drinking a small amount I just thought it'd be interesting to see how it affects my mood obviously we know that alcohol um, acts as a depressant so Having had a little mental health dip, I thought it was a great opportunity. Alex is doing it as well, which makes it easier. Does it taste like wine? Mm. <laughs> Not really, if I'm honest. It tastes nice. It tastes like grape juice, um, which I guess is wine. But I am missing, it's quite sweet. I'm missing that little kick that the alcohol gives you. But I had 0% gin and tonics last night, and they actually really tasted like a G and T. If someone gave that to me, out or in a bar or whatever I would genuinely think that, that had alcohol in it whereas this I'm like mm, <laughs> you can't fool me so another elephant in the room I don't know if that's the right phrase or saying I'm really bad with English as you will find out if you've watched any of my other videos I, I really struggle with my <laughs> work but what I wanted to talk about was the fact that Alex and me and Ollie who's now part of the family he is my nine month old cocker who, if you didn't know, we are moving house, well, moving flats. Um, let's be honest, we're not on a stage where we're living in a house, especially not in London. Uh, we really, really want to try and find somewhere with a garden, even just a small one. At the moment, we have a balcony. We're really lucky that we live next to two parks, like literally a park right down there, and then a park about a two minute walk where he plays with all his friends. But we just, it's mainly for us to be lazy in the morning. So at eight o'clock when he wants to go out, obviously we can just open the door up and he can go out and we can still be in our pajamas rather than eight o'clock us having to get ready, have to like take him out. It sounds really silly, but yeah, that's what we're hoping. But if you know the London market right now, there is literally nothing available. It's so expensive to rent a flat compared to how much you're paying for our current flat. So it's really, really difficult. My top tips if you're looking to rent a flat in London is to register with literally every single estate agent in that area that you're looking for. Tell them specifically what you're looking for, when your move-in date is, how much you want to spend and what they will do is they will contact you by email or phone you if anything suitable comes up and that way you can kind of be first to see the property and like first to put in your offer if it's right for you because the good ones do go i literally saw two this week on right move they were put up the same day they weren't right for us but literally by the next day they'd gone hello ollie hello do you want to say hello Huh? <laughs> I'm gonna film him on my phone and show you what he looks like. Hello, little man. Uh, no. No. No! <laughs> what? <laughs> Oliver, stop. He is currently obsessed. This has all just moved over, so I'm just gonna shift you back. Um. Yeah, he is obsessed with wires at the moment, which is super annoying. I just caught him in time about a couple of hours ago when he was chewing through the wire of my laptop charger. Hey ho, that's puppies for you. Right, so I've kind of addressed moving house. Let's talk about Ollie while we're talking about him. 
Oh my word. So when we first got him, I was obviously like, like head over heels, like obsessed with him. And then Alex and me were like, oh my word, have we done the right thing? Is this gonna... Oliver! <laughs> you just moved my whole tripod. This is a nightmare. How am I gonna film this video? Um, yeah, and we were a bit worried with obviously like me going to be a doctor. Alex obviously works full time as well, but Honestly, I think in the last few months it's all just come together. It's all just worked out. Like we've realized how we're gonna do it. Obviously friends, family, doggy daycare. To be honest, we only need like daycare either by a friend or professional once a week at the moment, which is really good. Um, and he just brings so much joy to my life. He makes me live a slower life, which I love. He makes me realize that medicine, everything else, it's, it's all, not that important but having people or in this case animal an animal in your life that fills you with so much love and joy is just better than anything else so i'm really grateful for that and honestly he just makes me so happy what are you eating i say all this um he bless him did have his little operation to cut i don't actually know what they do but basically he was neutered i'm still we're still working out how they actually do that <laughs> what that actually means like what parts have been removed slash cut slash i don't really know but all i know is that he can't impregnate any woman well any dog woman and hopefully the humping sort of calms down now he's done really well the first day when he had it he was really upset bless him no nope. and obviously you can't let them lick the wound which is what i told him off for now but he's got this little surgical suit on to cover the area and bless him he's doing so so well he absolutely loved the beach so if you don't know my parents live down in bournemouth he loved the beach over christmas and i'm so excited because um so I have my GP placement, which is two months, which is at the end of 2022 in my final year. And we got to choose anywhere in the NHS at a GP, anywhere in the UK where we wanted to go. I've chosen to go to Bournemouth to be, you know, to spend a couple of months with my parents, probably be the last time I'm ever like properly at home. Um, and I'm so excited for the beaches, for all the walks. And it's right before my finals. And I literally have no friends in Bournemouth because I grew up in Bristol and my parents just recently moved down there, which is ideal <laughs> because I'm just gonna be studying, studying, studying. I of course will come back at the weekends, obviously see Alex and see my friends who are staying in London. So I guess that brings us on to talking about medicine and where I'm at with, with that, as that obviously is a massive part of my life <laughs> and my social media. So if you don't know, I'm a fourth year medical student at King's College London. This year I have done my obs and gynae placement at St Thomas's Hospital, which is like the really central one at Waterloo. And I've done my paediatric placement at Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Woolwich, which is like a district general hospital slightly further out. And now I am so excited because next week, or the week after next, I'm starting my psychiatry placement. If you don't know, psychiatry is like what I think I want to do at the moment. I'm really excited about it. I've been to a couple of like get into psychiatry talks by the Royal College of Psychiatry, which I'd really recommend if you are considering psychiatry as well. And yeah, I'm just really excited by it. I just yeah i'm super excited i know i had a question on instagram asked me about top specialties it's definitely psychiatry i'd say gp is still up there um but yeah something where i get to talk about mental health for sure well not talk about it but get to help people with mental health i think is what i really want to be doing so yeah i'm really excited for that i am on a medium forensic unit which is really cool because i think forensic forensic psych is something that i'd could you not eat my tripod? I really like the idea of how it combines like law and legal side of things with medicine. I think, I just think that's really cool. And then my second placement is old age psychiatry, which again, I'm really looking forward to because I don't, I feel like you don't hear many medical students saying this, but I love geriatrics. I love care of the elderly. Elderly people are just fantastic humans. They have so much to talk about. On the whole, they are so kind and polite <laughs> compared to any other generation. Like, this is something I wonder, like, is it just their particular generation of, say, like, elderly people? Or 
does everybody become like that when you get old? <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments, but I think I'm verging towards it's just that specific generation. And for example, when our generation or when my generation become old, we'll still be horrible and rude and just miserable people. <laughs> Ollie is now trying to eat my chair. So yeah, I have an exam coming up next week, which isn't actually that important. It doesn't count towards my final mark. Um, I don't even have to technically pass it, but I have been trying to study because it's the last time I will do do it before the one that counts. Blurp of my Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> Was that any better? I really, really, okay, so quick interlude. I wasn't gonna talk about vaccinating, but I guess it's quite important. So over the last year, it's literally coming up to my year anniversary of vaccinating. I've been given give giving thousands of COVID-19 vaccines at a GP in North London, which has been really nice to feel useful and feel like I'm playing my part in the NHS because as a medical student you can feel quite selfish and self-centered as when you're on placement it's all about your learning rather than giving care like don't get me wrong there are times when you feel like you're helping a very small amount of times um because most of the time you're there just you know for yourself to learn which is obviously really important so that you can give back in the future but vaccinating has been the one time where I felt that I'm really giving back and especially at such an important moment for the NHS um, and it's been nice to earn a little bit of money like I won't lie it's been really nice and I'm really fortunate that I have been able to earn a bit of money during a really difficult time financially for a lot of people. Oh my word, why, why did I start talking about this? Vaccinating. I don't have a clue why I started talking about vaccinating just then. So we are swiftly going to move on to talking about my mental health, which is obviously why I created social my social media pages to talk about my mental health. If you have never ever heard me talking about my mental health before, well done you, how have you escaped that? Um, but just to quickly fill you in, when I was 15, 16, I developed anorexia nervosa. I was really unwell, but due to um, the CAMS waiting list, I never actually saw, I never actually got professional help apart from my GP. Um, so I kind of got better on my own, obviously with the help of, I say it on my own because it was with friends and family and lots of loved ones and, and lots of general support. Um, and then in 2019, 2018, it's hard to pinpoint obviously when a mental illness starts. I think sometimes it's not like, I don't know, a physical health thing where it's like, right, you've got a cold now, you're inflammatory markers are out, blah, blah, blah. That was a really weird example to give. Anyway, so let's just say 2018, 2019, I started to develop depression and generalized anxiety disorder. End of 2019, I became really, really unwell, just started to develop suicidal thoughts, um, started antidepressants, was the best thing I've ever done in my life. I'm gonna be making a video about my experience with antidepressants and like everything you need to know. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, have a look on my channel and um, it's gonna be the next video after this one and I'd say lockdown one it was a really horrible time for a lot of reasons but it gave me the chance very selfishly to step back from medical school um, because our placements were cancelled um, to step back from a lot of things and just really focus on me very selfishly when a lot of other people were doing very selfless things but anyway that was a a really privileged time for me that I was able to do that and make the best of you know, the best of that time which don't get me wrong was awful for so many other things um, and since then I have been getting gradually better uh, so much that I'd say end of 2020 I was you know 100% back to normal probably like better than I ever was before then at the end of last year so yeah, 2021 just continued to be to be really good actually. Um, came off the antidepressants in September 2021, mainly because I um, developed or I got diagnosed with like an autonomic, I got diagnosed with like a heart thing slash autonomic nervous system thing called POTS. I was advised by a cardiologist to um, try and come off the sertraline if I if I didn't need it anymore, which I felt like I didn't because it may be, you know, triggering my heart stuff. So that's what I did. But with um, with the guidance and help from my GP, so I came off it very, very slowly, reducing my dose. You know, it wasn't something that I, I just did overnight. Um, and I was fine. I felt fine for the next two months. Funny enough, 
December and the couple of weeks around Christmas, I felt quite low again. Um, I think it was because I was really looking forward to Christmas and my birthday. If you don't know, my birthday is on the 23rd of December, which is a crap birthday, but anyway, <laughs> it's quite nice at the time to have like two celebrations. And obviously with like COVID in London, I was really nervous about getting COVID and just Christmas being canceled again, basically. And then I kind of built like an unrealistic expectation of like how good Christmas was gonna be. I was a bit miserable over Christmas, I must admit, but being, and I always find the gap between Christmas and New Year really, really challenging. I just feel like I'm in no man's land. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with my life, especially because I wasn't in my flat in my own space. Um, but January, I normally feel really, really down, but this week I've just, you know, I've just treated it like last year, like, I haven't made New Year's resolutions. I I don't really believe in them. Like I will do a whole separate video on this if that's something interesting. Um, but I've just carried on like it's 2020. <laughs> Sorry, like it's 2021. I am so stuck in the past. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not putting pressure on myself to like change everything start a new morning routine, start doing all of this, start waking up at 6 a.m., start filming five YouTube videos a week. And it's just been really nice. It's been going well so far. Like I've hardly done anything this week. I have been to work vaccinating twice. I was gonna do a lot of revision the other three days, but I've probably done about three hours of revision each day. Maybe not even that much. I've been looking on right move most of the time. Um, taking Ollie out for really short walks after his operation. Today I saw my friend, went shopping, filming this YouTube video now. It's Saturday today. Um, so yeah, I guess just taking that pressure off myself has really helped and I feel my mood gradually getting better. Um, I did consider doing CBT again online, which is something that I'm definitely thinking about doing. Um, I am not at the moment going to restart my antidepressants, but definitely it's something that I will do if I feel... So because I was only feeling low, I guess, for a couple of weeks, um, if it carried on, then I was going to go back to the GP, talk about antidepressants, blah, blah, blah. But now that I seem to be doing better, I'm just going to see how I feel. If I do have another blip, then I think I will go back on the antidepressants, do another CBT course. But there are so many options there, which I feel, I feel very confident that if I am to get another low bit and you know it lasts longer than this time then I'm confident that there I have options where I can make myself better so it's not the end of the world but I am glad that I'm, I'm feeling better now so yeah I hope you've enjoyed my little life update it's been a bit rambly with my uh, non-alcoholic glass of wine um, but let me know if there are any specific videos that you'd find helpful that you'd like to see for enjoyment factor or for usefulness um, let me know in the comments and please hit like if you if you are still watching then hopefully you enjoyed this watching this video for one reason or another so hit like and please do subscribe as that would be really nice <laughs> a nice way to start 2022 but anyway i hope you have a lovely evening a lovely rest of your day whatever you're up to take care and look after yourself and i will see you next time bye everybody <laughs>